So in a couple of videos, um, I had talked about the Geiger counter uh, <laughs> inside the server rack, and that is actually a Mighty Ohm Geiger counter. And it's the one that I showed the video of uh, a couple of videos back where I talked about using a power supply over USB and how to hook up a Mighty Ohm Geiger counter with no circuit alterations to be powered over um, the headers that were on the board by default. Um, so I've done that, and that, that is a Mighty Ohm Geiger counter connected via USB in a 1U case just off of Amazon, a cheap 1U plastic project box. Um, and I've got a couple. This is a Grafana.net dashboard, and so what, what I'm doing here, there is a PowerShell script I have that is taking the data from the COM port and sending it to Zabbix. Um, I am using Zabbix as my time series backend because I have Postgres with, with uh, uh, time series connected to that. I happen to use that for my daily work, uh, and I'm intentionally trying to create more metrics and more data inside that database than I would normally have for my small number of systems. So I've done that. And so I click on Geiger counter now, uh, and we're going to let this load. Uh, and I would highly recommend if you haven't used Grafana Cloud before, you go set yourself up a free account. Um, we use it at work, or I use it at work, and I, I really do love it as a tool. What Grafana lets you do is keep all of your data in your random data sources um, and present these graphs. Now, what you're seeing here, um, you've got my counts per minute, count per second, microsieverts, CPM, CPS, and there's microsieverts graph. Now, like I mentioned, this is being done um, by Zabbix. So I do have a timescale database. Um, I want to flip this to 30 days. There might be some gaps in the data where I did some maintenance. There you go. So you can see I was doing some work and forgot to turn things off. And I had some problems with my script whenever I thought I started things back up and I, I oopsied. Uh, so ignore the gap there. Well, let's just, I'll show an example, by the way. I'm going to select this data. We'll just select the good portion here. How about that? and then let off. Um, so you can see, uh, what I plan on doing is I want to get data from NASA showing uh, solar flares. And I was wondering if I would actually see an increase in uh, background radiation during during solar flare events and if I could line it up with my Geiger counter. And my Geiger counter is underground. Um, uh, so that, that server room you saw is, is below soil. Uh, so my theory was um, I would only be getting uh, the sort of radiation that would come from solar activity. Now, it's also a brick room, so there's going to be some emission from the brick as well. But that was the Geiger counter view, um, just using Grafana Cloud. And to kind of show the back end on this, uh, here's the Zabbix interface showing um, the various uh, items I've created and you've got counts per second, blah, blah, blah. And what's happening is these are actually uh, trigger items uh, or trap items. So I'm using the Zabbix trap service, which there's not a whole lot of documentation on, but it works really well. Uh, so I can go here like um, micro sieverts and I click on graph and you see this peer, this area of uncertainty and it's you get with uh, time scale DB is going to do that. So if I go like five minutes, uh, you're going to see it because I've got this set to trend pretty aggressively, but that area of uncertainty is going to appear um, more aggressively as it normalizes the data over time. So if I go to like this month so far, <laughs> you've got this huge upper and lower band. I say huge. We're zoomed in pretty far. You know, this is within a decimal. Uh, you know, it's so... Um, but it's kind of cool just to kind of show, like, I don't think many people are showing using Zabbix in this way. It's a very funny thing to be using it for time series data like this. I think the, the more common approach would be, I don't know, literally anything else, <laughs> uh, like like Influx or something. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely uh, abusing Zabbix more than what most people would probably be doing. And here's a remote desktop session to the PowerShell script as it's running, and I... Do not feel like sharing the code because it is hot garbage. Um, but it's it's a COM port over USB. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting to the COM port. And with PowerShell, it's kind of nice because the COM port will automatically start buffering as soon as you open a connection. So with Windows, this is really easy. You can actually install PowerShell in Linux. I haven't tried working with COM ports in RHEL, uh, but I'm assuming it'd behave the same for PowerShell's sake. 
Um, basically though, I go to open the port and it immediately starts buffering. And so what I can do is I can iterate through and I can read the buffer. Uh, so what's happening here is it's reading the buffer and it processes the values and then it transmits each of the individual values after breaking up the string uh, line by line. And so you see it doing these transmits um, and you can see it's sending to the uh, 10051. Uh, that is the, the trap port on the Zabbix server I've got here. The example is 7.77. Uh, so, you know, it's a very, very straightforward process uh, from that regard. So, yeah, if anyone was wanting to do this, this is a good example of using the, uh, the Zabbix trapper, which I don't think I've seen a lot of videos online. Like I said, there's not much documentation on it. It works great, though, for stuff like this. So, definitely a, a abuse of Zabbix. Anyhow, not a lot of component level stuff to show off there. Um, I know I had mentioned in a previous video I would talk more about the Geiger counter. I just didn't spend a lot of time uh, discussing it. And I haven't done a lot of computer side tutorials using screen recording. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this. I really prefer to stick to high voltage and stuff for showing goofy little projects. I don't think people need yet another meandering screen dialogue. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll do some more of these in the future. I don't know. Anyhow. Hope you enjoy that cute little Geiger counter dashboard. Hope you go set up a Grafana instance and start charting some things. Oh, you know what? Where is, where is that? Aha. Uh, I, I should mention this. Uh, I built a template for Zabbix that will collect data from Weather Underground. So if you're using a personal weather station... Uh, it will collect data from Weather Underground and uh, use their API. So it'll just pull their API with Zabbix, of course. Uh, and so with Zabbix, it would store that data on its back end. I don't know based on the terms of service with their API if they'd want that being shared. Uh, I may or may not post that. If there's actually interest, you could message me. But um, if you use Zabbix and you would like and you have a Weather Underground personal weather station, you have to have a personal weather station to use that. Um, then I can get you that template. Uh, but you can see here, this is using the um, outdoor humidity from that. And then there's the cold aisle humidity derived from our APC net bots. Here's dew point, you know, and then your data facility, the dew point's the concern, right? So you don't ever want to have condensation in your server room. Uh, you can see the exterior dew point. Here's temperature. Cable modem's the hottest. Uh, below that's hot aisle. Then there's my cold aisle. It's very consistent. And here's outdoor. See, we've had a lot of swings, but look how stable that room is. I'm pretty proud of the uh, that air and humidity. I think I've done a pretty good job on setting up a very, very well-controlled climate for those servers, especially considering it's a residential environment. Uh, wind, barometric pressure, blah, blah, blah. There's mains voltage. This is being pulled from the um, APC UPSD. Uh, I have a, a shell script that's being ran by Zabbix and extracting these values. Uh, I wrote a custom check. Uh, again, so this is all Zabbix data uh, being pulled from various things. So this is APC UPSD on RHEL. Uh, it's actually Rocky Linux because uh, RHEL is evil and IBM wants to charge tons of money now and call us open source freeloaders so they can shove it. Not to be overly opinionated, I guess. Uh, but there's UPS load, UPS battery voltage. There's time remaining. So... A lot of cool graphs, but yeah, so that was the other thing I should mention is Weather Underground uh, integration. But this is probably a good example of all the cool stuff you can do with Grafana. Uh, and I'm, I'm rambling all over now. So, all right. I'll leave you guys. See y'all. Bye.